Hello again. We're going to show you a little video using Artec Leo, one of the most versatile scanners in the world. Here, it's just a simple shape of scanning a bar. Many people say you need markers, many people say you need all sorts of other things to make it work. With Leo, it's very simple. You can scan and process the job with ease. So let's have a look. So, turn on your scanner, set your distance, and start scanning. Here we're actually using the features of the bath, uh, where we've got a few tiles and things to aid our tracking and see where we're going. Uh, we could be sharing the screen to another device if people wanted to see what's going on. The most important thing is that you can see, and you can keep a good distance. What we need to do is ideally have green for the best result, uh, but blue shows it's a little bit too far away. You can adjust that distance and move in closer. If you get too close, then it changes to red, then you need to pull away a little bit. But you can see you can carry on scanning around the object, picking up the features like this. We did scan another piece to it, and you can see both bits here, which is the front of the bar. It's very easy with the touch screen to be able to see what you want to do. So the next step is we need to load it into the computer. You just launch Artec Studio. You can connect to your scanner by Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Choose your project and it will load it in. Depending on the size of the project, it will take a little while to do. Here we are. This is the resultant raw scan data. We can see this on the screen. You can maneuver around to see what you've got. You can change the display so that you can take off that color and see the multiple pieces of scan. We're just going to use the autopilot. Uh, you can process this manually, but as the software has already uh, got these things in line, you can choose the options that you want. Here it says, do you want to do a bit of editing? We didn't. Do you want to do aligning? It's already aligned. So we just let the autopilot carry on the process with uh, normal things like global registration, outlier removal. It'll fuse it all together and you get a nice job. So this now is all ready to be able to use in any other application that can take a mesh. It's accurate, clean data, ready to use. Just gonna show you a little bit of reverse engineering as people have asked, can this be done? There's various solutions. Quick surface is very popular for some of our customers because you can trim the mesh to select just the piece you want. And it's got a very powerful auto surfacing tool. Uh, you can change the attributes to make the auto surfacing make better fitting for you. It just needs to run through post-processing this shape. Once you've actually achieved what you want to do, uh, you can check with the surface analysis tool to make sure that it's within the tolerances that you want to work with. You can see the shape, you can have it nicely rendered. This is showing the rendering and we're going back to checking on here to see the comparison. You do have the ability to put markers on so that you can make notes and see what you're doing. If you wanted to make it into a nice presentation, you can change the color in here. It's not a CAD program as such for artistic work, but it is a good visualization of what you're achieving. Output is in the standard CAD formats so that you can transfer this into any other CAD format that you want to, a bit like Step and iGES. Here we say save the file, it writes the file out to disk. If you're a SolidWorks user and you have it on the same machine, you can use this feature to export the mesh to SolidWorks directly. Here we're taking the finished iGES surface uh, or nerve surface it's making a direct transfer into SOLIDWORKS and you get the result in here so you're ready to use. So hopefully this is useful just to give you a quick idea on how easy it is. Thanks for watching.